Thanks to God, He grants us victory through the power of God. I greet all my brothers and sisters with a holy and powerful peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus. Today, we will pray Psalm 90. We will be reading Psalm 90, verse by verse, and we will pray based on this. Psalm. I want this prayer to be a blessing in your life and in the life of another person. For this reason, please share this video with a friend, a family member, so they can also receive this prayer. Amen. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. I also want to send my greetings to all the subscribers of the channel and to all those who have activated the notifications. Thank you very much for being part of this prayer family. All the subscribers of the channel are already part of my prayer family, and I include all of you in my prayers. If you wish, feel free to comment below to make your prayer request. I always read the comments and present them in prayer. Before God Psalm 90 is a psalm written by Moses, a beautiful psalm that brings us a reflection and a very important life lesson. It is Psalm 90, in verse 1, it says, Lord, you have been our refuge from generation to generation. Here, the prophet Moses writes this psalm. And in verse 1, he makes an important declaration, saying that God had been and continues to be his refuge from generation to generation, the refuge for the people of Israel. The faithfulness of our God is astounding. He is our refuge, the one who guards, delivers, and protects us. And in verse 2, Moses further says, Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. In this second verse, Moses, the psalmist, the prophet, speaks about the greatness of our God, that before all things were formed in the universe, God was God and is God from eternity to eternity. The prophet Isaiah says that the Lord is the Prince of Peace. He is the Father of Eternity, the Mighty and Powerful God. And in verse 3, Moses continues to write, saying, You turn people back to dust. Saying, Return to dust, you mortals. Because in verse 4, it says, A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Here, in verses 3 and 4 of Psalm 90, the psalmist Moses, a prophet of the Lord, shows how fleeting human life is and how quickly it passes. However, God, with His omniscience, His power, His exalted power, in verse 4, Moses brings a profound revelation about God. He says that for God, a thousand years is like a day. This shows us that God's time is different from our time. A thousand years may seem like a long time for us, but for God, a thousand years is like a day. This signifies how great, how powerful, how majestic our God is. The God we serve is a powerful, great, and exalted God, so much so that a thousand years for our God is like just one day. And in verse 5, he says even more, You sweep them away like a flood, they are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed, in the evening it fades and withers. Here, in verses 5 and 6, Moses is referring to the fragility of humanity, how fragile human beings are. Men and women are like plants that grow, wither, and die. And how transient we are in the face of the greatness of our God. And in verse 7, he says, For we are consumed by your anger, by your wrath, we are dismayed. In verse 8, you have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. Verse 9, All our days pass away under your wrath, we finish our years with a moan. Here, Moses is emphasizing once again how fragile human life is and how much we need God. We need God to breathe, to live, to be happy. 
We need God for everything in this life. God is the refuge for the weary soul. God is the compass that guides the lost. God is the rock that remains steadfast and keeps our lives firm in His presence. Because of our fragility, we need to stand firm in the Lord so that we do not fall. And this Psalm 90 illustrates how fragile human life is. And in verse 10, it says, The years of our life are seventy, or even by reason of strength eighty, yet their span is but toil and trouble, they are soon gone, and we fly away. Here, in this tenth verse, Moses is saying that human beings reach seventy or eighty years with much weariness, and we can see how fleeting this life is. Do you remember that some time ago you were fifteen years old? There was a time when you were ten years old. And notice how quickly time has passed. Notice how swiftly time has flown by, and you didn't realize it passing. And that's what Psalm 90 wants to remind us of, how transient life is. We need to make the most of this. Life in the presence of God, in the presence of the people we love. And in verse 11, it says even more, who considers the power of your anger, and your wrath according to the fear of you. So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Here, the psalmist, the prophet Moses, is asking God to teach him to number his days. What does that mean? To number our days? Notice that the wisest people, those who possess wisdom, are able to understand the dilemmas, the problems of life. Notice that fools, those who are not wise, cannot perceive life. They live as if they never truly lived. They live as fools. They live without comprehending the human existence. But those who fear God, those who seek God, can receive from God the wisdom to live. And that's why in this Psalm 90, Moses says, Teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. And in verse 13, Moses says, Return, O Lord. How long? Have pity. On your servants. In verse 14, Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Verse 15, Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, and for as many years as we have seen evil. Here, the psalmist, the prophet Moses, is referring to the period of struggle and trial that the people of Israel and Moses himself went through. Without a doubt, Moses wrote this psalm in light of all the anguish, battles, and evil he had experienced in his life. However, in Psalm 90, Moses is praying to God, asking for mercy, seeking God's help, and asking the Lord to look upon him. He acknowledges his insignificance, his humanity, and recognizes how great and majestic the Lord is. And in verse 16, Moses says, Let your work be shown to your servants, and your glorious power to their children. Verse 17, Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish the work of our hands upon us, yes. Establish the work of our hands. Here, in verse 17, the psalmist, the prophet Moses, is asking God to confirm the work of their hands. This means that often people do not recognize the work of our hands. But Moses is asking God to acknowledge the work of his hands. In other words, Moses is saying, God, see how much I have done for you. When we talk about hands, the prophet Moses represents it well. Because the Bible says that when Moses, the same one who wrote Psalm 90, was in battle, Joshua and Hur were there supporting him. And the Bible says that Moses' hands grew weary. As long as Moses held up his hands, the people of Israel were winning the war. But when Moses lowered his hands, the people of Israel would lose the battle. Aaron and Hur held up Moses' weary hands and extended them. And Moses prayed for the people, and they won the fight. In writing this Psalm 90, 
Moses is expressing a kind of spiritual weariness. He is presenting before God how small he is and how great God is in his life. That's why in Psalm 90, Moses says that for God, a thousand years is like a day. It's as if Moses wants to say, God, you are too powerful, and I am merely a speck before you. You are too majestic, and I am a grain of sand before you. I am transient in this life, but you, O oh God, are mighty. God delights in this. When we acknowledge how small we are, when we recognize our fragility before God, before the one who lives and reigns forever, that's when God manifests his power, his love, and his glory. God doesn't need the strong because he is already strong. God doesn't need the great because he is already great. God needs the weak to show those who think they are strong that he is a powerful God. That's why God used David. In human terms, David was the smallest, the weakest. Goliath, the giant in human terms, was the strongest, the most powerful. But God uses the weak to overcome the strong. God uses the small to defeat the great. God uses those who are not to confound those who think they are something. So, my friend, who is listening to me at this moment, this is the blessing of Psalm 90. God is affirming to our lives, I will confirm the work of your hands. I am your refuge. I am the one who guards you, says the Lord. For this reason, be encouraged, rejoice, and rest because God is the one who sustains you. God is the one who protects you. God is the one who delivers you. And the blessings of Psalm 90 are upon your life. There will be a reign of victory, a reign of grace, a reign of power, a reign of blessings in your life, in your family, in your home, and wherever you lay your hands. The Lord will confirm it as a blessing, as prosperity. Wherever your hands touch, the Lord will prosper. The Lord will bless. That's why in the last verse of Psalm 90, verse 17, Moses says, Confirm the work of our hands. Today, God is confirming the works of your hands, meaning God is confirming your blessing, your victory. God is confirming the open door in your life. God is confirming the honor of God in your story. Claim this word. Take hold of the blessings of Psalm 90 in your life. Amen. At this moment, I want to offer a prayer based on Psalm 90. I want to pray for you, for your family, for your home, for your work, for your business. Please type your name below in the comments. I want to offer this special prayer for your life. If you can, close your eyes at this moment. Focus on God, and let us pray. Sovereign God and Eternal Father, Creator of the heavens and the ends of the earth, in this moment of prayer, we come before you and ask for your blessing and provision. God, we have just read Psalm 90, verse by verse, and we want to claim all the blessings that are found in Psalm 90. Lord, we ask you to confirm the work of our hands. Confirm, O oh God, the blessings that we need to receive from your hand. Remove from our path anything that blocks, anything that hinders our victory. Grant us, Lord, your salvation, your deliverance, and the rewards that come from your throne, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene. In this moment of prayer, I pray for your servant who is listening to me now, for your servant who is hearing me at this hour, in the name of Jesus. Christ of Nazareth. Open every closed door and grant victory to your people. We ask you, Lord, for your deliverance. Comfort the hearts. Refresh the souls, O God, in the name of Jesus. For all those who are suffering for any reason, for all those who have lost, for all those who have failed, 
God, in the name of Jesus, console, comfort, and lift them up in the power of your might, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Visit the families, visit the homes with your peace, with your love. I pray to you, Lord, come and bring your provision, your answer, your love, your victory for the glory of your name, we ask you in prayer. Pour out your love upon us. Lord, pour out your infinite mercies, your infinite graces upon us. Pour them upon our lives, upon our family members, upon our homes, for the glory and praise of your name. We ask and desire this. We thank you, we thank you for deliverance, we thank you for healing, we thank you for open doors. We thank you for everything you are doing and everything you will do in our lives. Release upon us, Lord, an abundance of days. Release upon us health and prosperity, and the blessings of the Psalms in our lives. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We ask and thank you in advance. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Thank God, and may God bless your life. May God bless your family and bless your home. Share this prayer with someone you love, with someone you care about. It is always good to share the good things in life, and prayer is something good for our soul, for our spirit. I will conclude here. Today we will be reciting a powerful prayer from Psalm 70. I am certain that this prayer will strengthen your faith, fortify your hope. And you will be strengthened in the Lord Jesus. Amen. Share this prayer with your friends and family. It will undoubtedly bless other lives. Feel free to leave your prayer requests in the comments. I am always reading and presenting all prayer requests before God. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I invite you to become part of this wonderful prayer family. We are here every day, praying and seeking the face of God. We will now read Psalm 70 and then pray to the Lord, calling upon the Almighty God. Psalm 70, written by David, says the following in verse 1, Make haste, O God, to deliver me, make haste to help me, O Lord. Let those who seek my life be put to shame and confusion, let them turn back and be disgraced, those who desire my hurt. Let them be turned back because of their shame who say, Aha, Aha. May all those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you, and may those who love your salvation say continually, Let God be magnified. However, I am afflicted and in need. Hurry for me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer, O Lord. Do not delay. This Psalm 70 shows us. The distressed psalmist, David. He was probably going through a very, very difficult moment in his life. And who has never experienced such? A moment? A moment of anguish, sadness, affliction, to the point where you cry out, saying, God, hurry to deliver me. In verse 5. The psalmist is saying, however, I am afflicted and in need. Have you ever experienced such a moment, a moment of affliction where you feel helpless, alone. But I want you to know that the God who answered David's prayer is the same God we serve. And if your soul is like Psalm 70, anguished, sad, crying out, saying, God, hurry to help me, I come here as a prophet of God in your life to tell you that God will hurry to help you. God will hurry to grant you victory. God will hurry to place in your hands what you have been praying to Him for. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that even in this year, you will experience the best of God on earth. You will conquer everything you have asked for and dreamed of. Just persevere, insist, persist. Stay strong in your purpose because God is faithful to fulfill the promise. And in Psalm 70, the psalmist is saying, 
I am distressed. Hurry, Lord, hurry to deliver me. And maybe you said, just as the psalmist said, hurry, God. I can't take it anymore. I can't bear it any. Longer. Maybe your strength has run out. Maybe your faith has run out, but God is strengthening your faith through this word and telling. You, hold on a little longer, wait a little longer. God will intervene in this matter. God will provide in this situation, and you will witness the hand of God entering your home, your emotions, your finances, and rebuilding everything that has collapsed, everything that has been destroyed. God will restore it in your life because the blessings of Psalm 70 are descending upon you now. Receive in the name of Jesus. The blessings of Psalm 70 in your life, your home, your health, your finances, your family, in the name of Jesus. The psalmist was sad, distressed. He needed God to hurry and show him favor. And maybe you're in the same need, needing an immediate answer, needing an urgent victory from God. But be calm, be patient. In the spiritual realm, God is working in your favor. Your eyes may not see it, but there are angels of God fighting, warring, and victory will be granted to you. The Bible says that Daniel prayed for 21 days, and he only received the answer to his prayer on the 21st day. However, God had told Daniel, since the first day you set your heart to pray, I heard your prayer. In other words, God had already heard your prayer. But sometimes there is a spiritual battle preventing the miracle from happening. There is a war between the forces of good and evil. But God is putting his hand in this matter. It is where God intervenes, hurry, Lord, hurry to deliver me. And maybe you said, just as the psalmist said, hurry, God. I can't take it anymore. I can't bear it any longer. Maybe your strength has run out. Maybe your faith has run out, but God is strengthening your faith through this word and telling you, hold on a little longer, wait a little longer. God will intervene in this matter. God will provide in this situation, and you will witness the hand of God entering your home, your emotions, your finances, and rebuilding everything that has collapsed, everything that has been destroyed. God will restore it in your life because the blessings of Psalm 70 are descending upon you now. Receive in the name of Jesus the blessings of Psalm 70 in your life, your home, your health, your finances, your family, in the name of Jesus. The psalmist was sad, distressed. He needed God to hurry and show him favor. And maybe you're in the same need, needing an immediate answer, needing an urgent victory from God. But be calm, be patient. In the spiritual realm, God is working in your favor. Your eyes may not see it, but there are angels of God fighting, warring, and victory will be granted to you. The Bible says that Daniel prayed for 21 days, and he only received the answer to his prayer on the 21st day. However, God had told Daniel, since the first day you set your heart to pray, I heard your prayer. In other words, God had already heard your prayer. But sometimes there is a spiritual battle preventing the miracle from happening. There is a war between the forces of good and evil. But God is putting his hand in this matter. It is where God intervenes. Satan cannot prevail. Wherever God places his hand, the enemy cannot prevail, and God is placing his hand upon your situation, upon what you have been praying for. Victory is guaranteed by the blood of Jesus shed on the cross of Calvary. Hold on to your victory, hold on to your blessing. Do not give up, insist, persist. Stand firm in faith and prayer because God will grant you the blessing, will grant you the victory, and you will come back to this channel to share your testimony.
make this vow with God. Lord, if you deliver what I am asking for, I will return to Bruno Souza's channel and share my testimony of that word from Psalm 70, Hurry, God, and I will say. God hurried to hear my prayer, answered my plea, and granted me victory for the glory and praise of your holy name. The only thing we need to understand is that every victory is for the glorification of God's name. We have nothing for ourselves, everything is for God. Everything belongs to God, for from Him and through Him and to Him are all things. When God grants you the house you have been asking for, say, Glory to God. It was God who gave it to me. When God gives you the car you have been asking for, say, Glory to God. It was God who gave it to me. When God gives you the marriage you have been asking for, say, Glory to God. It was God who gave it to me. Of course, we do our part. Of course, we make efforts to conquer, but everything comes from God. It is God who exalts, God who humbles. It is God who impoverishes and God who enriches. It is God who kills and God who makes alive. Everything is under His command, everything belongs to Him. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. For from Him and through Him are all things. Everything is in the domain of Jehovah, and we serve this God. So take hold of this word. Take hold of the blessings of Psalm 70 in your life and believe with all your heart, O God who hurries to grant victory. And the God of Jacob, He is not just the God of the past. He is the God of yesterday, today, and forever. He is the God of Jacob, and He has taken charge of your life. And victory is yours. What has God signed in your life? What has God signed for your life? No eraser from hell can erase what God has written for you. Take hold of your blessing. Lift up your head, turn things around because you were born to conquer, and nothing and. No one can take away the presence of God in your life, within your heart. And at this moment, I want to unite my faith with your faith. I want to unite my hope with your hope. I want to unite my certainty, my conviction with your conviction and certainty. I want to unite my prayer with your prayer, and together, in one unified cry, let us pray the prayer of Psalm 70. Amen. Let us pray, Sovereign God, Eternal Father, Creator of heaven and earth, in your holy and powerful, invincible and infallible presence, we stand. We are here to ask of you, we are here to thank you. We are here to pray, to seek your face. You are the one who lives and reigns forever. The psalmist was in a moment of anguish and sadness when he said to you, hurry, O God, to deliver me. And we want to make the psalmist's words our own. Hurry, O God, to help us. Look upon the tears of your daughter, look upon the tears of your servant who is listening to this prayer, and perhaps is crying and asking you for an answer, a provision that only you can give. Lord, you are the specialist in the impossible. Nothing in heaven, on earth, in the stars, or in the seas is impossible for you. You can do all things. You are the one who walked on water. You are the one who multiplied bread and fish. You are the Lord who healed the paralytic and made him walk again. You are the one who made the blind see. You are the one who raised the dead. You are the one who died and rose again on the third day. You are powerful. You are magnificent. You are the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, the Lamb of God, the bright morning star. Lord, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You are omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. You are present in all places, and nothing is hidden from you. 
You know and you search all things. You know the heart of your servant, the heart of your handmaid. You know our hearts. God, you. Interpret the tears of the faithful believer. And in this moment of prayer, we want to present ourselves before you. Just as the psalmist. David presented himself in Psalm 70. And he said, But I am poor and needy. Look, O God, upon the affliction, the need of your people. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we ask of you, we implore before you, we prostrate ourselves at your feet, recognizing your greatness. Recognizing that only you are faithful to fulfill, to accomplish the promises. You are not a man that you should lie, nor a son of man. That you should repent. Your word says that if your people, who are called by your name, will humble themselves, pray, seek your face, and turn from their wicked ways, then you will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. And here we are, humbling ourselves, seeking, praying, repenting for all the mistakes we have made, and we ask you, O God, to do the impossible and the supernatural, to do what the doctors could not do. Do what the lawyers, judges, and prosecutors could not do. Open the way for every cause in the justice system, remove the obstacles, and grant victory to your servant. And to this afflicted mother who has been praying for her child's deliverance from drugs, alcohol, and addiction, set free, Lord, this woman's child and grant victory in the name of Jesus. Lord, to this afflicted and needy mother who prays for her children, who prays without God for her children, grant this gift, this blessing to your servant in the name of Jesus. Rescue, O God, this young woman, this young man from the addiction of alcohol and drugs, and make her a missionary in your presence, make him a preacher of the gospel. God, in the name of Jesus, I present this couple who are in crisis, this couple who is on the verge of divorce. God, in the name of Jesus, reach out with your outstretched hand, enter with your power and restore this marriage. Restore this family that is in crisis and grant victory to God for the glory and praise of your name. We cry out to a God who is faithful, who is mighty, the creator of heaven and earth and everything in the universe. God, we ask you in the name of Jesus to perform the miracle, Lord, for this woman and this man who are seeking a job opportunity. Open the door of employment. Lord, bless the financial life of your daughter and son so that they can come back here in prayer and share the testimony that the door of employment has been opened for the glory of God. Open the door of employment in the lives of your daughter and son. Bless the material aspect of our lives in the name of Jesus, especially. Bless our spiritual lives, make us more intimate with you, make us Lord, more and more of your friends. Each day, make us more and more excellent worshipers. God, may we seek your face every day not out of pain, but out of love. It is love that we want to seek your presence. God, we trust in your power and we place you above all else, above everyone. You are in first place in our hearts. God, in the name of Jesus. We don't want to serve you just for what you can give us, but we want to serve you, Lord, for who you are in our lives. God, in the name of Jesus, bring your peace, bring your blessing, your love, your favor. May the blessings of Psalm 70 manifest in the lives of this woman and this man who is listening to me. I present before you, O oh God, all the prayer requests that have been placed in the comments of this video. Enter with your blessing, enter with your provision, enter with your answer, and grant victory to your people. In the name of Jesus, we ask. You, in the name of Jesus. We cry out to you in the name of Jesus, we implore you before you, Lord, exalt the humble, bring down the one who exalts himself, grant victory to your people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
We ask you in the name of Jesus. Come and heal the illnesses, whatever type of illness is in the bodies of your sons and daughters, let every illness disappear now in the name of Jesus. Disappear, for the word of God tells us in Isaiah 53 that the Lord has borne our sicknesses. The punishment that brought us peace was upon you, and by your wounds, we are healed, restored, transformed. So send your healing, send your favor, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hurry, O God, we are asking you as servants. We are imploring you as humble servants in your presence. Without you, we are nothing. Without you, we can do nothing, without you, we will achieve nothing. But with you, Lord, we can do all things, with you, O God, we can overcome the challenges of life. We acknowledge that, without you, we are powerless, for you are our shepherd, and we shall not want. Therefore, O God, I present the requests of your sons and daughters and grant a special victory, an exclusive blessing, a blessing from your throne in the lives of each brother, each sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May the blessings of Psalm 70 be upon our lives, and may you, Lord, hasten by your mercy to grant us victory in every area of our lives, so that our testimony may be told and your name glorified in our testimony of victory and blessing. In the name of Jesus, we ask and thank you in advance for all that you have done and all that you will continue to do in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Amen and thanks be to God, and may God bless your life. Take hold of this word, take hold of this prayer. Believe that the God of David, the God who hastens to help us, is with you, and with God, we are the majority, with God, we will break down walls, and with God, we will overcome giants. With God in our lives, we will overcome the storms. With God, we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus, our Lord, our God of love and mercy. May God bless you greatly, you and your entire family. A big hug, and may the peace of the Lord Jesus be in your heart. And remember, you were born to conquer and experience all the blessings of Psalm 70 in your life. The peace of the Lord Jesus, and may God bless us more and more.